Hi everyone, this is Gary. And uh, in this video, I want to go over a few things. Um, I want to, number one, show you that the skills that we've been um, learning are universally applied to any kind of image editing in Photoshop Elements, not just compositing, because I've been showing you these skills in the context of compositing. And by compositing, I mean combining several images into a new image. Um, so I want to make sure that you understand that the skills I'm showing you apply to any kind of image editing. That That uh, is really the true power of of what I've been showing you and why I've been putting you through all this. All right, so I also want to kind of introduce you to the camera raw file format because even um, today's point and shoots support the raw format. And I'm going to hopefully give you a little insight into why you would want to, you know, at least consider shooting in raw and, you know, show you some benefits of shooting and editing in RAW because the fact of the matter is Photoshop Elements does support RAW files. Not many people know that. Now this is Photoshop 11, uh, Photoshop Elements 11 I should say, and they have revamped the interface a lot. If you're looking at this video uh, with version 10 or below, no worries um, because everything I'm going to show you equally applies. You just sort of have to try and translate into the older interface. Um, so, but I will say that the camera raw uh, conversion, or, uh, the camera raw converter that comes with Adobe Elements 11 is improved over 10. And I think there are also enough improvements in the features in Photoshop Elements 11 to justify upgrading from 10. Now, if you're happy with 10, fine. I mean, it's not like it's that big an improvement, but I personally uh, can justify the cost of upgrading to uh, Elements 11. Now, remember, I use Photoshop. I'm, I don't use Elements in my daily professional workflow, but I do teach Elements. So I am familiar with it. And um, I really feel that uh, and I didn't feel this way in the beginning, but I now feel, having lived with Elements 11 for a while, that it is a worthwhile upgrade for several reasons. And some of those you're going to see today, I hope. All right, so without any further ado, I'm going to open um, a raw image into Elements. And you're going to see that it's actually going to open into uh, the Adobe Camera Raw Converter, or as we call it, ACR. So I'm going to go get this image. Um, if I can find it, I know where it is. Here it is. And this is a .dng file. This is a special kind of raw file, which I don't want to get into right now. For our purposes, just, you know, be aware that it's a raw format. Now, if your image, because I gave you guys this image, if your image looks similar to this, then what you need to do is right up here in this tiny little bizarre looking icon, click on that, a flyout menu comes up, and choose Reset Camera Raw Defaults. Because this is actually the state that the image began its life as. This is how I shot it. And I exposed this image specifically for the sky. And I knew I was going to be sacrificing the buildings. In other words, they went into shadow, so they're nothing more than silhouettes. But because I shot raw, I can get that detail back. And that's one of the things that you should understand about shooting raw. A raw file retains a lot more image detail than a JPEG does. All right, so we have some uh, adjustments that we can make over here. I'm not going to go over all of them. And they are going to be a little different if you're in uh, Elements 10 or below. These up top, however, will be the same. This is the white balance section. Um, and you can change the color temperature and tint. I'll come back to that. But check this out. I'm going to increase my exposure to 2.5 ish and that basically is two and a half stops so I've brightened this image by two and a half stops I've lost a lot of cloud detail but I have gained some detail in the buildings and in the vegetation now if I take my highlight slider which is the third one down from the exposure slider and move it to the left look at that I just got back a lot of highlight detail. Now, if you're in 10 or below, you're not going to have a highlight slider. However, you are going to have a recovery slider. Take that slider, which should be defaulted to the left, 
and move it to the right. The farther to the right you move it, the more image detail you'll get back in the highlights as well. Okay, so far so good. So we've brightened the shadows a little bit by increasing our exposure, and we've gotten some highlights back by moving our highlight slider to the left or our recovery slider in 10 or below to the right. I'm also going to open up my shadows a little bit. And you don't have a shadow slider in Elements 10. What you would do is take your black slider, which should be sitting about here, and you're going to move it all the way to the left. That will open up your shadows a little bit. However, I've, I've managed to make my, um, my um, um, shadows, I've, well, I've managed to make my overall image a little bit duller by opening up my shadows. So I'm going to take my black slider and move it a little bit to the left. That brings back some of the darker shadow area. You're not going to be able to make this move in 10 and below. That's just the way it is. Now I'm going to take my clarity slider and move that to the right to about plus 75. Look at how much more detail I've gotten back in my buildings and my sky. That's what clarity does for us. It increases mid-tone contrast only. It doesn't touch the darker shadows and it doesn't touch the highlights. Only mid-tone, so that's a good thing. I'm going to take my vibrant slider and move it to the right to about 65. That increases my, eh, maybe 70. That increases my um, um, saturation in the more subtle colors. So that's really good. I never use a saturation slider. I'm going to suggest that you don't either. It doesn't do a very good job at all because it increases the saturation of everything and it looks unrealistic. We just want to increase the saturation of our more subtle tones and that's what Vibrance does for us. Now I'm going to come back up to my temperature slider and make this image warmer by going to about 6400. And I'm going to take my tint slider and move it into the green area to about minus 13 or 14 to try and get some of the green color back in my vegetation. And that's about all I'm going to be able to do here in um, the Camera Raw uh, converter. This is known as ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. One more thing, if your bit depth says 16 bits per channel, please change that to 8 bits per channel. Because it turns out that um, Photoshop Elements 11 and below, Elements in general, does not support 16-bit images. You can open a 16-bit image into Elements, but you can't really do that much with it. So I'm just going to convert it to 8 bits before I get to the editor. Having finished with my editing in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to click on Open Image. If I want to click on Done, this image would just simply close, but it would retain all of these edits. And that's another cool thing about the RAW editor. These, these edits are getting saved with my RAW file. Okay, but I'm going to go Open Image. And that opens the image into the Elements Editor like so. Now, at this point, I'm going to stop this. I'll call this Part 1. And then Part 2 will be the editing into inside of the uh, Elements Editor itself. So this was about Camera Raw, Part 1. Part 2 will be about the Elements Editor. So that will be all for now. If you want to pick this up later, I suggest you go to File, Save, and then make sure your format is Photoshop because you're going to want to save this as a .psd file. Let me, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I don't need to, but you will if you want to pick this up later on. I want to point out that this image, however, is no longer a raw file. When you open it up into the Elements Editor, it loses its raw um, rawness, I guess you would say. It's now basically a native PSD file. So the point is, uh, it's now become a pixel image as opposed to the raw image, which is kind of a different animal. Um, I don't really want to get into that right now, but just sort of take my word for it. Um, when you save this, it's no longer a raw file. So, okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.